In chapter one, we start by giving you a context. That is, we discuss the changing nature of work over the course of history. We don't, we're not able to understand the present change if we don't understand the past. And we need to understand how industrial revolutions have developed and what that development has meant for work, how work, the content of work and organizing of work has changed in parallel. That's what we discuss in section one of chapter one. Section two of chapter one discusses the ongoing change, the fourth industrial revolution. And we will go, go over what it actually means and how it already has changed the content of work, how it has changed the relationship of work to time and place and traditional employment contracts, and what we see going onwards, what we and other researchers see going onwards. In chapter two, I will talk about the societal implications of the change that we just discussed in chapter one, going over the industrial revolutions and showing you how they have all in turn changed the way we work. Societal implications of fourth industrial revolutions are structural changes and different kinds of societal implications of those structural changes. We're not able to go through everything because this is a limited course, but we're trying to give you some of the key changes and key implications. And then, as I said in the beginning, encourage you to go forward in the areas that you find most interesting. Section one of chapter two discusses the structural changes. And there we talk talking about the disappearing and emerging jobs. Here is maybe the key thing to remember or key thing to lift up. One of the sort of key questions people often ask when we talk about fourth industrial revolution is that, is all work going to go away? Are we going to lose all work? And the answer is no. Work is not going to go away. However, all work will change. One of the reasons why this course exists is to help you all to work with this change and be proactive with this change. In section two of chapter two, we discuss the societal implications of the change. And there we're talking about the need to reskill employees going on onwards. You've all heard the term lifelong learning. We all need to think more about how our work will change, what part of it could go to the machines and how we ourselves could be developing our own skills. And this problem exists also in the societal level. It's not just an individual level question. There's a societal level question of how do we make sure that everybody stays on board, that everybody is able to reskill themselves. And the other issue of chapter two, section two, is the different kinds of societal structures around work. We talk about labor legislation and societal institutions. And another key thing to lift from there is that societal institutions always change slower than what technological development would demand. Therefore, we have an, if you like, urgent need to rethink our institutions around work, our societal institutions around work, and update our labor legislation to support and maintain a sustainable future of work.